Scouts win six April. Stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. Place your right hand over your heart. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Madam Clerk, would you call the roll? Yes, Mayor Corm is present for the City Council, Successor Agency, Housing Authority, and Joint Powers Authority. Um, public comment. Persons wish to address the City Council, Successor Agency, Housing Authority, Joint Powers Authority on any item on the agenda. Excuse me, Mayor, your mic, sir. Oh. Anyone that wishes to address City Council, Successor Agency, Housing Authority, Joint Powers Authority, on any item on the agenda may do so at this time. Three minutes. Excuse me, Mr. Mayor, may I? Yes. Uh, at uh, staff's request, I'd like to pull a consent calendar item number three and have that rescheduled at a future date. And it's pulled. Hearing no public comment, we'll go on to item one, CSA one and H1. Warrant register. Move payment. Second. Okay. Madam City Clerk. Council members, successor agency members, and housing authority members, Padilla. Aye. Morales. Aye. Fogg. Aye. Mayor Chairman Butts. Aye. M1. Approval of the minutes of the meetings held on February the 6th, 13th, and 27th, 2024. So moved. Second. Second. Madam City Clerk. Council members, Padilla. Aye. Morales. Aye. Fogg. Aye. Mayor Butts. Aye. Consent calendar items 2, 4, and 5. So moved. Second. Second. Madam City Clerk. Council members, Padilla. Aye. Morales. Aye. Falk. Aye. Mayor Butts. Aye. Uh, closed session item A1. Thank you, Mayor. We had a closed session item regarding the claim of uh, Mr. Bennett versus City of Inglewood. As to that, the request for settlement authority in the amount of $20,000. So moved. So moved. Second. Second. Madam City Clerk. Council members, Padilla. Aye. Morales. Aye. Falk. Aye. Mayor Butts. Aye. A2. Thank you, Noah. Reports from the city attorney's office. And then we'll move on to CM1, Mr. City Manager. Uh, thank you, Mayor. No oral reports today. Thank you. CI1. Uh, no reports, Mayor. Thank you. No, C no C one. Well, CC1 then. then <laughs> no reports. <laughs> now we go to CI1. Uh, initiative by Council Member Dion Falk recommending that the mayor and council members approve the city sponsorship of the second annual Inglewood Music. Music Festival to be held on Saturday, June 29th, 2024 at Darby Park in an amount not to exceed $150,000. I will I'll move the item with a, a modification with the not to exceed amount to be $100,000. Uh, we had a general agreement last year that we would fund it again this year. I have a concern about um, promoters being paid from the general fund for music festivals, but uh, I've moved this with a $100,000 cap to be reduced by any sponsorships that are received. Yeah, I'll, I'll second it. Uh, I would like to lean over to Councilwoman Falk. Do you accept that friendly uh, amendment? Ms. Yes, Falk? I do. Okay, so I'll second that with that. Okay, Madam, Madam City Clerk. Council members, Padilla. Aye. Morales. Aye. Falk. Aye. Mayor Butts. Aye. Uh, we're going to the successor agency. It's open, CSA 2. Approval of the minutes of the meetings held on February the 6th, 13th, and 24th, 27th, excuse me, 2024. Move approval. Second. Madam City Clerk. Successor agency members, Padilla. Aye. Morales. Aye. Fogg. Aye. Chairman Butts. Aye. Adjourn the successor agency, housing authorities in session, H2. Approval of the minutes of the meetings held on February the 6th, 13th, and 27th, 2024. Move approval. So move. Second. Second. Madam City Clerk. Housing Authority members, Padilla. Aye. Morales. Aye. Falk. Aye. Mayor Butts. Aye. Adjourn the Housing Authority. The JPA is in session, JPA 1. Approval of the minutes of the meeting held on February the 13th, 2024. Move Second. approval. Second. Second. Madam City Clerk. Joint Powers Authority members, Padilla. Aye. Morales. Aye. Falk. Aye. Chairman Butts. Aye. Well, during the JPA, um, appointments to boards, commissions, and, and committees, there are none. Uh, we'll go on to public comment regarding other matters. Any person who to the city council on a matter connected with city business, not elsewhere considered on the agenda, may do so at this time. One minute. Uh, 
Uh, let's see. Try it again. Uh, I, I, we can we can hear you. We can hear you. Mic check. There you oh, go. Now it's working. All right. Yeah. Uh, good afternoon, Mayor, City Council, City of Inglewood. Um, I just wanted to let people know that after eight years of after we've reopened the Miracle Theater, my wife and I on Market Street, we have uh, Netflix as a joke coming in early May. Wow. And we've got BET Experience coming in late June. Uh, we work with a lot of local community organizations for, we have a certain allotment of comp tickets. Uh, we're working with the adult services group there at Inglewood Public Library for a couple of tickets for some shows. So uh, that opportunity and offer is available for anyone who wants to come find us at the theater and uh, do, t do check out some of the shows. There's some good ones coming. So, all right, thank you. Thank you. Hello, and thank you, council people, for having, uh, allowing us to speak. My name is Wesley Cronk. I'm a uh, member of uh, Local 323 Carpenters Union. It is estimated that construction tax fraud is responsible for cheating communities out of billions of dollars in tax revenue. That's billions of dollars of lost tax revenue that could be used for building and renovating schools, repairing roads, caring for veterans, sheltering the unhoused, and funding other essential public programs. The prevalence of construction industry tax fraud has reached crisis levels and must be stopped. This April 13th through 19, Western State Carpenters Local 323 and the United Brotherhood of Carpenters are taking part in the National Tax Fraud Days of Action, a week-long series of events to second, raise sir. awareness. Sir, excuse me a second, sir. Gentlemen, you're going to have to take a seat. There are fire regulations, and you really can't block the highway. So it really, I hope you got enough of good footage, but we can't do that. I appreciate that, sir. Thank Go you for Go ahead, that. sir. Uh, the Tax Fraud Days of Action grew out of the awareness, a widespread outrage about construction industry tax fraud, a range of practices where employers evade their tax responsibilities in several ways. Often, they intentionally misclassify workers as independent contractors or pay workers in cash-only arrangements. As a result, these businesses significantly reduce their income tax and payroll tax responsibilities and defraud communities out of much-needed tax revenue. And as communities are continually facing budget shortfalls, it's more important than ever, and more important than ever, to crack down on these bad actor employers who are stealing from the residents of Englewood. Thank you for your time, for, for my time. Thank you very much, sir. Good afternoon. My name is Tariq Flint. I'm a part of the Carpenters Union Brothers Keeper Pre-Apprenticeship Program. Tax fraud is harming some working families. When employers shift their taxes, shift their tax burden onto their employees, employers must then pay their employers employment taxes out of their pockets, which places a huge financial burden on the working families. Also, when employees aren't on the books, they're on the hook. If they get sick or injured on the job, cannot work, no health benefits or workers' comp. Bad actor employees, employers are preying on vulnerable workers from taking advantage of our immigrant populations to undercutting the competition. These bad actor employers are defrauding our, work, our working families and our communities by doing business that only fattens their wallets. Thank you. Hold on one second. Sir, sir, I want to ask you a question. So I, I like that when they're not on the books, employees on the hook. So are you saying that um, you're talking about contractors that hire workers so, as 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 as, as independent contractors and they 1099 them is that what you're saying um well what i'm saying sir is so basically if we have work out here with these contract with these contractors do is they come from other states and they mm -hmm. get their elite they come from other states taking our jobs which is our union jobs for people we work mm -hmm. for the union mm -hmm. So, so, so what you're saying is that not they're hiding union employees as contract employees. You're saying they're 1099ing people other, from other jurisdictions. Yes, sir. Because, okay. they, because those folks get tax breaks, and so it's easier for them to bid lower, and they outbid our unions here. Is, is, is that what you're and saying? That's where yes, sir. Okay. Thank you very much. No problem. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Okay. Hey, my name is Michael Carrion. And I called uh, Mr. Morales' office several times and never got to speak to nobody. 
Come on, you got a vehicle parked out here, three feet from the curb, yet you're out there giving tickets. It's a city vehicle. I went to the police station, I asked them, and an arrogant um, lieutenant, whoever she was, told me that she had it parked there and it was none of my business. Well, I almost got into an accident. So I'm letting the city know, if anybody gets in an accident there, you will be liable because the vehicle is three feet from the curb, okay? Anybody else parked from three feet from the curb, you're out there siding, collecting revenue. And then to be treated like a stepchild by the Inglewood Police Department leads me to believe that you have more than one bad cop here. I believe in the broken window theory. you got officers stealing kilos of drugs from your department. Sir, Yet, oh, it was only one. He's sir, been doing this sir, for sir, 21 sir, years. Sir, your time's up, but you're, you're moving from a parking violation to kilos of cocaine. Here, 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 here's, here's, what, here's what I'd like you to do. I'd like to give your name to the sergeant arms and your phone number, and someone from Internal Affairs will call you about this incident. All right? Sir, sir, if you, if you want to get a call, give your information to the... All right, all right. Thank you, sir. Thank you, thank you, sir. And action. All right. How you guys doing? My name is Tyson Baker. Um, I am the director of marketing and brand manager for the Inglewood Clothing brand. I just want to make everyone aware that this summer we're going to be doing what is called the Inglewood Summer Concert Series, which will be a fair for resources as well as a concert that will focus on four areas, which is job placement, job development, entrepreneurship, and resources for children and parents, as well as health and wellness, mental, physical, and emotional health and wellness. I propose to have this at Centinella Park, AKA the new name that they've given it. Uh, but I do want to make everyone aware that I plan to do this, or we plan to do this, this summer and would look for the full support of city council. There is a uh, pitch deck that's floating around and I have submitted it to Parks and Recs. God bless everyone. Thank you for coming. Have a wonderful day. Okay, with that, we'll uh, close public comment and we're, we're gonna go to council comments, but I would mind the audience that now you have to applaud for all the councilmen too. <laughs> It's just, it's only, it's only fair. It's only fair. So, Councilman Padilla, did, yes? Sorry, is that your lady right there? I think she wanted to speak. Come on up. Well, come on up then. That's okay. Good afternoon. It's Daniela. And today we're here to talk about the education system in Inglewood. Um, so we wanted to bring this to your attention as we know it's a growing problem. Um, since 2019, there have been three schools that have been shut down. Um, it's not only a burden to the parents, but it's also been a burden to the children. Um, and it's been causing the education system to decline. Um, so with, uh, we just have a fear that more schools are going to continue closing, um, and that's going to push families to have to take their children to um, schools outside in other cities, which is going to be um, a equity concern in terms of like financial burdens, um, transportation, things like that. So we just um, are proposing, we're I guess proposing that some of the profits or um, revenue that come from like um, places like the SoFi Stadium that we have, you know, put in a lot of money to build um, into back into the school system. So let me ask you, lady, something. You, your suggestion is that someone finance the operation of schools that don't have children in them. Is that what you're saying? No. Okay. Yes, but also I think you know, the reason why a lot of children aren't in these schools because the education system is lacking, because there is not enough staff members, because there's not enough well, teachers. Well, well, actually, that's not, the, that's not the truth at all. The problem is that they have schools open that they are staffing with teachers and principals and nurses, but they have like two, 300 students. Did you know that? 
Okay, I didn't think so. So, so, wait a minute. I think it's the superintendent calling me now. <laughs> okay, but here's what, here's what I want to tell you. I'll tell you a couple of things. One, the, the city doesn't run the school system. It's a separate entity of government. However, how, however, Mark, you always mess with me. Wait, Mark, stop it. <laughs> oh, stop calling it. Okay. <laughs> okay. Okay. And so here's, here's the deal. In uh, 2011, there were probably 17,000 students in the Inglewood Unified School District. Today, there's just under 7,000. Schools are financed by property tax revenues throughout the state, and, 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 and they're paid on a formula called average daily attendance. And so I, last I knew it was like $3,800 a child. And so if you go from 17000 <clears throat> down to under 7000 you lose more than two-thirds of your revenue. And now you're still trying to hold open schools with teachers and nurses and principals for just a few hundred students. Now, these decisions, which were made by the school board and the county administrator, finally, they're, they're right-sizing the number of school plants to fit the kids that are actually in the system. And so it isn't a case of, um, it's a case that they have to make the school system more desirable, they have to, to have a better output when it comes to teaching the kids, and that's what it's gonna take. Now, I, I could have just said, oh, it's, the, it's not our responsibility as a school district, but I want people to understand that it isn't a case of there isn't sufficient financing, there's not sufficient financing to keep school plants open that don't have enough kids in them, okay? Mayor, if I could just add, they, they, I just want to point out uh, the fact that exactly what you're requesting, that they remain open, schools, while they're not needing, they don't have enough students, as the mayor said, that has been happening. And for the past six or seven years, they've kept them open too long. Mm -hmm. And what that has done is not improved the district. Yes. It hasn't called back students. It's made every school lack resources mm -hmm. because yes. then they're using the ADA funding that they get for one school to keep other ones open. Mm -hmm. So your request would not help us. That has actually been happening for the last six or seven years. And quite frankly, you know, the superintendent, now the state trustee, is making some tough decisions, but it's what's going to help us. It's what's going to help us. Oh, yeah. So we, we really want you to carry that message out. It isn't it that they want to close schools. Mm -hmm. The fact is there just aren't any kids in them, and, and, and therefore you're spreading the little money that the district has across plants that don't have children in them. Okay? Mm -hmm. All right. Thank you very much. Well, now you got to go back there and talk because we, 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 we <laughs> said, this is the yeah, open time. You can go it's in the It's usually back. not that coming. open, but the issue yes. is, is, big for, <laughs> is big for the city. It's pretty open now. Check. Hey, my name is Cherie Danielle, and I am the CEO and executive creative director of my own company called 4K More Creative. And I have a vision to identify and develop 4,000 more creative leaders in the next 10 years and provide them equitable and sustainable jobs in their entertainment and production industry. We're in Englewood. There's a lot of awesome opportunities. In fact, I spoke with Mark before the holiday, um, Christmas of 2023, and he said, hey, Cherie, there's going to be these sound stages that uh, Bomber's going to put on the lot at Hollywood Park. Aren't you excited? And I said, well, that's pretty cool. But how do we get jobs in those sound stages? And he said, well, let's go figure that out. So I'm here just to introduce myself. We have a ton of talented black and brown creative entrepreneurs in this city. And with the Olympics coming up with, by the way, Mayor Butts, I look forward to hearing you on the panel. I think you're going to be at Urban Marketplace on April 24th to talk about the opportunities. I am. Yeah, I'm excited to hear it. Um, there's a lot of money. There's no reason why a lot of us creatives shouldn't become millionaires in the next few years. Then we can afford to fund the schools, fund a whole bunch of things. So we'll be buying up houses and sending our kids there. But anyway, if you want to know a little bit more about Sheree 4K More and the vision to um, help the creative economy here, specifically for black and brown creatives, I'd love to chat with you and figure out how we can get more of our creatives in these huge entertainment conglomerates that we have in our beautiful city of Inglewood. Thank you. Okay, with that, we'll close public comment, and I will have Councilman Padilla from District 2. Great. Thank you, Mayor. You know, I just want to give a great shout-out, really, to a dear friend, uh, 
Owen, uh, you and, and Mariana uh, have done so much for our downtown area. When you opened up the theater, I got to tell you, folks, if you've not been there for a concert, you owe it to yourself. It is amazing. I, I, I even have told Owen this several times when my wife and I go there and we bring friends there. They walk away going, dang, this is the best kept secret. And it's not that we're trying to make it a secret, but you really got to come down to the Miracle Theater, enjoy a concert, or enjoy one of the other many events that they host. But listen to the key thing. He's willing, they are willing to give folks that may not be able to afford to go to a concert or an event free tickets to go. So if you have an organization, a nonprofit, or any other organization, take advantage of that opportunity. It's right here in downtown Inglewood. And on your way there or from there, go to one of our different businesses and have a great dinner and just enjoy the evening here in the city of Inglewood. So again, Owen, thank you for uh, your presentation. Uh, <clears throat> I do want to also thank the Carpenters Union, the local 323. Right? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. There you go. <laughs> right? But uh, I want to thank you because you fall under that thing of let your voice be heard, mm -hmm. right? And there's strength in numbers, mm -hmm. you know? And so I applaud you for that opportunity to come here today to let your voice be heard. Mm -hmm. Folks have to see that. They have to understand why this is important for you. And that's why I'm glad the mayor asked, you know, what, what is it that you're looking for? Because not only, f we may already know, but folks watching this at home, you educating them on why it's important. And so, again, thank you very much for all you do and continue to do. Uh, you know, it means a lot, right? And so, again, thank you for being here today. Um, and then I want to talk on uh, the schools real quick. You know, we all, we all love our schools. Nobody wants to do anything that's going to jeopardize our students or anything like that. It becomes a point where a cost-benefit analysis, where you look at the kids, you look at staff, and we want to give them the best opportunity to have the best education that they can get. But we have to be cautious and diligent on how we approach that so that we can, if we have to close some of our schools, we're not just putting our kids out on the streets. We're saying, okay, we're going to keep these other schools open. You're going to have an opportunity to get, you know, continue to get an excellent education, but we have to do what's right. As Councilman Morales said, for many years, the school trying to be the good guys kept schools open that really should not have been left open. It was just, you know, not cost productive in the sense that you have to look at, at your finances, right? You have to do what's right, but at the same time, what's right by keeping our kids in the education process and then helping to make sure we give them enough staff. Mayor, can I get a minute? Yeah. All right. And then one more thing. Uh, this coming Thursday at 6 p.m. over at my District 2 Community Center, and I'm sorry, 5.30, uh, there's going to be a presentation by L.A. City about the center medium. We're always getting calls about that center medium on La Cienega off of Fairview, off of Sentinella. It's got all these weeds and this and that. Well, we're going to have a meeting there putting, being put together by L.A. City staff to talk about that center medium, talk about a sewer line, talk about a water line that's going to go in there, and then also talk about... Uh, beautifying that area, you know, so that we can make it look look nice and pretty when folks drive through and to Inglewood. So if you can make it, it's at 1201 La Tijera Boulevard. It's the District 2 Community Center right across the street from La Tijera School. And then finally, uh, Mayor, if we can close in the honor of a dear friend of ours mm -hmm. who we worked with for many, many years at the Santa Monica Police Department, Lieutenant Steve Heineman who passed away pa this past Friday. And, uh, you know, if, if we can just close in his honor, he was probably or, or was one of the best persons you could ever meet. I mean, just a heart of gold. I mean, he was like uh, a giver. I mean, he helped out our police activities leagues. Any community members and organizations that needed help, you can count on Steve Heineman. You know, just down to earth. We're going to miss him dearly. And our thoughts and prayers go out to his family, his kids, and his grandkids. Uh, and may he rest in eternal peace. I love you, Steve. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.
Councilwoman Falk, District 4. Mm, thank you, Mayor. So I, too, want to uh, lift up the Carpenters for coming out and making your voice be heard. It's important for a community of workers to stand together on issues that you believe in. And I'm from a union, and um, every a lot of people have been a part of unions, and we all know how important it is to stand together, to unify, and to make a difference. So I commend you all for coming out and taking time out of your day to be here. So thank you for being here. Um, also, I wanted to shout out Owen. Um, the Miracle Theater is absolutely wonderful. It is a uh, another crown jewel in the city of Inglewood. Every time I go in there, I'm amazed at how beautiful you have restored it and made it just amazing. And there's lots of great events happening there. So we're very proud of what you're doing at the Miracle Theater. And um, we look forward to continuing to support you and your efforts there. Um, in District 4, I want to let our residents know that we do have some um, repairs that's going to be happening uh, starting in May. So I want to kind of make sure that everybody notes it and there nobody's caught off, off um, caught by surprise with um, these repairs that will be happening in the streets and alleys. So it will happen on 104th Street, 108th Street, 8th Place. 8th Avenue, 1st Avenue, 2nd Avenue, 3rd Avenue, 4th Avenue, 5th, 6th, 7th, and 8th, Doty, and the Alley West of Van Ness. So residents, please, if you have any more questions, contact my office. But I want to make sure you all have this on your calendar and you're aware so that you're not caught off guard. I want to thank Louis Atwell our assistant city manager for um, making sure that he brought this to my attention so our residents can be aware of the situation. Um, also, I'm, I am meeting with the residents in the Lock Haven community. That's going to happen on April 23rd. There's a few issues with commercial parking and with a homeless situation that's happening there. So I will be meeting with those residents. So please make sure that you are, um, and if you're in that area, please come out to Bennett on April 23rd. We're going to get started. Um, around six o'clock. And then I want to give a big shout out to Cinder Eller, her glass slipper foundation event that happened over the weekend. She is blessing so many beautiful young women um, right here in Inglewood that are graduating from high school that may not have the opportunity to afford a prom dress. And so she has um, found a lots of, uh, been able to gather a lot of donations for these beautiful young ladies that might be a little bit financially challenged. And so I was happy to be there. I love what she's doing for these girls and congratulations, Cinder. I will look forward to being there again next year with you and my colleagues. And lastly, we have the Women Rock event that's coming up May 4th. Please, 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 if you don't have your uh, ticket, then please go on to Eventbrite and get it. It will be a wonderful event for the ladies in Inglewood. We want to educate our women. We want to provide them with important health information, financial information, so that they can all work to build their own generational wealth and, and be healthy. And then enjoy themselves, meet our elected officials that represent them every day. So um, please um, make sure you look for uh, the Women Rock event, right, and register today, and we will prioritize City of Inglewood residents. Thank you, Mayor. Let's hear it. <laughs> we got us clapping for each other. Uh, no. <laughs> Councilman Ella Morales, you guys clap, District yeah. 3. <laughs> District 3. Hey, um, well, first, since this, uh, my guys, the Carpenters, are here, listen. Shout out to Kyle and Salvador who have done a great yes, job yes, of kind yes. of representing you guys, you know. But I want to say something about the Carpenters. You know, you guys belong to a group that, you know, has stayed strong. You don't always, you know, run with the with the group because you have to. You know, you guys have become leaders. This is one of the examples. The other one is you actually 
uh, create a program to come in and point out contractors that have been bad in the past for violations and you make sure that workers are getting paid. So that's a big deal. And then I know you guys created a really job uh, training program, Sven, you're including some of the kids here in Inglewood and you have a brand new one out in, I think, Carson or somewhere over there. Um, so I've seen pictures and stuff like that and I think it's awesome. So hopefully you guys pick up a lot of our Inglewood kids, but, you know, and congratulations for you guys uh, showing up at, at meetings like this and, mm -hmm. and saying what you have to say. So, you know, believe it or not, everybody's listening. So thank you for that. Yep. Um, Owen, Owen, I remember when. <laughs> Let me tell you, man, that was uh, quite the lift you did. I remember visiting you when it was barely purchased, and you walked us through, and uh, I don't know who else was with us, but I remember being there, and the seats were all torn up and everything else. And, and I have to say that you've become, uh, you know, uh, one of our destinations and something that we all point at when we bring in new folks and we uh, kind of give them the tour, uh, trust me, you know, uh, if you hear somebody honking, that's me driving by somebody by right there because <laughs> I do it all the time and I tell them your story. Uh, so thank you for believing in the city and I'm glad you see the city believes in you. Um, and also with, the, with the, your success, you brought out that nonprofit. I spoke to an artist uh, recently uh, that you, you allowed you opened your doors to him, and he had a great kind of program there. Uh, so I saw some pictures of that. That was it looked like an awesome event. So thank you for also doing your part here, uh, and congratulations, man. Um, really quick, somebody said something about artists and everything else. I want to point out I didn't get a, give a, have a chance last week to uh, give a thank you to 1500 Academy. I know uh, some of uh, my colleagues were there with us, and they did a great job. Uh, but talk about talent in the artist industry. I mean, these are guys that go out of their way and uh, really do promote their trade, their their profession, and it's amazing. They've been here for 15 years. They bring in folks from all around the country, and um, I just wanted to say thank you for having us out there for a great event. And then uh, lastly, I do want to touch a little bit again on the schools. I have to say that you know, right now, because of the situation we're in, our schools, not all of them have assistant principals. There are some that don't have PE teachers. And that's a product of, of not making steps, not taking these difficult steps. Mm -hmm. And so I want our kids to have all of those resources. I want them to have PE. I want them to have those science labs. I want them to have, every school should have an assistant principal. These are things that matter. And so right now, I'm very focused on supporting the kids in terms of making those decisions and when we speak about that, because the truth is that, you know, it's about quality when it comes to school, not, not quantity of keeping mm -hmm. them open. So, um, you know, we don't usually talk as much about every little thing that gets spoken about, but I just believe that there's a lot of rhetoric out there that's not true. And parents should know the truth because the aim is to get the best thing for their child. Uh, so we're supportive. That's what we're supporting. Um, and that, with that being said, everybody have a nice evening. Thank you guys for showing up. Hey, all right. <laughs> Every week. Uh, let's see. So... We had uh, a little thing over at the COSM, a uh, little job fair. And uh, COSM is an immersive experience so that, like, if you can't be at a Super Bowl, then you can go into this building, and it's like having those, those glasses on that, that are 3D, and you're, you're at uh, a Super Bowl game right there in the middle of it. It's good, and it's only like thirty-three bucks. You guys, it's amazing, Oof, for right? The Super Bowl. Um, and so they had a little picture thing at their at their job fair. Uh, also, a gentleman named Saul Rodriguez is going to be the next chief of El Segundo, and uh, Saul worked with uh, myself and uh, Councilman Padilla. Uh, I hired him, uh, promoted him, I think, up to the rank of sergeant or lieutenant. I forget which, but now he's the first Latino chief of uh, El Segundo. 
and that's a big deal. <laughs> And I'm, and I'm proud to say I spent 15 years uh, as a chief in Santa Monica. And during that, since that time, and during that time, we've had 16 chiefs of police that went on to other places. It's the most chiefs of police generated out of one agency other than the Sheriff's Department and the LAPD. And there are 10,000 and 12,000 officers, and we're a mere 216 in Santa Monica. So we're very proud of that. But only one councilman. But, and we've only, but we've only generated one councilman, uh, yeah. and, 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 two, and two mayors, two mayors. That's right. Uh, all right. That's right. That would be uh, uh, Nat Travis was uh, the mayor of Santa, uh, Santa Monica, and James Buss the mayor of Inglewood. James Buss. There we go. And, and, and so I'm going to tell you guys something. So, so you guys see this guy, this good-looking guy back here in a suit. That's Emory. So he's head of security. So he, like texts me like when things are happening he says you know there's like 20 picketers you know coming up <laughs> to the council meeting Man, don't and, snitch and, them and, off and, and, no he's supposed to and 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 he said he said they're like the carpenters i said well dude they're not coming for me i said we've made more jobs in inglewood for the unions than anybody in the last 10 years <laughs> right <laughs> you know you know i, I said these, <laughs> these are our people and so what i want to tell you is that I'm grateful that you came and told me about this 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 issue because you know in all of our development agreements we require one their union two uh, that that there's local hire and and uh, it's in our development agreement so all of our big projects have been job generators but when you told me about this this is something that we're going to be on the lookout for so thank you guys very much for taking the time to come and, and let us know. And, and I like seeing the seats full, too. So with that, I'm going to close in the name of Steve Heineman. He it was just a wonderful person. And uh, he had two sons that grew up to be pro baseball players. And even after retirement, he was always doing community things. And, and, and he's going to be sorely missed. In fact, the, the, the week the Two days before he passed, we were supposed to have lunch together at Paul Martin's, but he had to cancel. And then on that Wednesday, I understood that he passed. So it's very sad. On so on Friday, the okay, so it was Wednesday. We were supposed to have lunch together. So with that, um, we're going to close in the, in the memory of Steve Heineman. And thank you, gentlemen, for coming. And ladies. Sorry for your loss, guys. Uh, okay.